Hey guys, it's Chris with Better Editor, and today we are talking about some more free software, but not just any free software. I'm talking about what I would consider to be the best free video converter that is on the internet today. And I don't say that lightly. This thing is the Swiss army knife of video converters, and it's called Shutter Encoder. Now, Shutter Encoder can do all of these amazing things that you see over here. And I'm gonna take you through how I use it in my personal workflow almost every single day. So some of those things are gonna include how to take a huge batch of files in a large folder directory and convert them while keeping the directory intact. Now, I'm also gonna show you how to take MKV files and turn them into ProRes files without a middleman. No need to go to MP4 first and then convert to ProRes straight from MKV to ProRes. And I'm gonna wrap things up with showing you how to handle some variable frame rate footage like you would shoot on your iPhone. If any of that sounds interesting to you, stick around. Okay, so let's fire up Shutter Encoder. So we're gonna grab this. It'll take just a moment for the little app to open. And you'll see it's a cute little thing. It doesn't look like very much, but there is a lot of power inside of this tiny box. Before we dig into anything else, I wanna to go to the settings and show you something. Up in the top left, click the gear icon, open up the settings and swing down to your outputs. You can set your default outputs to wherever you want them to go. The next thing I wanna show you is to set your GPU decoding. Make sure that is set to auto so that if you can use your graphics card to decode stuff, it's gonna do it. All right, we can close those. Now, one of the really cool things that Shutter Encoder can do is it can convert files and keep the folder structure, the folder hierarchy intact. So you can see here in the advanced workflows course that I just created, there is a ton of footage. This is just one part of the project. Other parts include this. We've got so much footage in here and all this footage is in ProRes. If I want to convert this entire course content folder into a more download friendly H.264 file, I can do that and keep the folder structure intact. I'll come here, swing down to output codecs and say H.264. I can change my bitrate to whatever I want it to be. These are all HD, so I'm just gonna go ahead and crank this up to say 8,000 and then change my advanced features to make sure that I preserve the folder hierarchy. Simple. With that, I hit start function and the whole thing's gonna go. Now, this would take a while because there's 572 files, so I'm not gonna do that at this moment. Okay, so folder structures are cool and all, but what if we want to take an MKV file and convert it directly into a ProRes file? Um, well, up until now, that would be kind of hard. You would have to go MKV to MP4 into a ProRes file using you know, a few different programs like Handbrake and Media Encoder or DaVinci Resolve, something like that. Shutter Encoder gets rid of all of that process and we go straight from MKV to ProRes. Now let's say you have a bunch of MKV files that are buried inside of a deep folder structure, kind of like this. All of these folders are full of MKV files, all right? And I wanna convert them directly to ProRes. I don't wanna have a middleman where I have to go to an MP4 file first. So I can drag this entire folder structure of MKV files into Shutter Encoder, go to my function menu and say ProRes. We're gonna leave it at 422. You can choose any flavor that you want. And also just Look in this real quick again. Under the editing codecs, there's DNX HD, DNX HR, Quick Times, there's GoPro Cineform, even uncompressed. So you really can go to any intra frame codec that you're looking for. I'm going to stick with ProRes. And then here, I'm going to change my advanced features. Well, first, I'm going to make sure that my scale is still at source. I'm going to leave everything at source settings. But under my advanced features, I'm going to make sure that I preserve my folder hierarchy. And on the destination, I'm going to change this to go to my exports folder, this will be great. And we'll say much ado dash exports, select folder. And look at this, it even has a render queue. So you can add different jobs to Shutter Encoder, stack them up, press go, leave the room, go get lunch, grab a coffee, and it's gonna work while you're enjoying yourself. So let's go ahead and launch this. And we'll circle back when this is all done. Okay, so things are done. That was fast, right? So let's look at our exports. And in here, we have the entire folder structure. That's pretty cool. The last thing I wanna show you with Shutter Encoder is how you can use it to help your workflow dealing with variable frame rate footage. You know, footage that's shot on an iPhone or phones in general. Now, what's the deal with variable frame rates? Well, these are some of the issues that they bring up. Now, 
Premiere Pro has its own way of dealing with variable frame rates internally inside the program, but in my opinion, the best way to deal with variable frame rates is to convert them to a constant frame rate before you even bring them into an NLE. And because Shutter Encoder can handle a ton of files at once, you can kick off an encode, go get some coffee, and come back and be ready to edit. So to show you how to use Shutter Encoder to help your variable frame rate workflow, we're going to use this clip that my wife took of me playing on my child's scooter that she got for Christmas. If you hold on for a minute, um, you'll see me do a really sweet bunny hop. Right there. Okay, so enough of that. Now, I'm not very impressive on a scooter, but I can show you how to change this. The first thing we want to do is drag it into Premiere Pro to make sure we're actually working with variable frame rate footage. So if I bring it in here, right click and go to properties, in our inspector window, we can see that variable frame rate has been detected. You'll also see that it has a weird frame rate 299 eight instead of 2997 or 30 or something like that. So let's close that. And we will close this, drag this into shutter encoder. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna choose a function and go down to H264. And in H264, again, we can change our bit rate if we want to. I'm gonna leave it the same. I'm gonna show you another neat thing that shutter encoder can do. We can actually change the input and output points of the clip itself. So if I click this, it'll open up another window all right, and we can pause this. And then we can drag our in and out points to where we want them to start. So say right before I turn around, and then over here on the out point, let's do this shortly after I do my little bunny hop right there. Okay, and then we're gonna leave the window open. And now I'm gonna go down to advanced features to change the frame rate so that we can make this 2997 exactly. To do that, we're gonna click conform by, change our option to speed so it'll be fast, and we'll go to 2997, which is going to match the frame rate that the phone was attempting to be at. And we'll say start function. And it's going to export to exports iPhone VFR. So we'll go here. Now we can play this back. You see it starts at the new endpoint. And it ends shortly after that. And just to double check, we can drag it into Premiere Pro. open up our property window, and you'll see that we no longer have a variable frame rate, and you'll see that it's 2997. All right, so that's Shutter Encoder. I hope you like it as much as I do. It's an amazing program that absolutely shouldn't be free. So if you go and download it, please donate a little bit to Paul Pacifico to help him keep developing this awesome program. Um, if you like this video, please click that subscribe button and maybe even ring the bell. See you next time.